Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of The Fogo Life. I'm your host, Captain Ron Dimpelmeyer. So what we did is we bought a brisket. We made a brisket. But you know when you trim all that fat off and you got all this left? We got almost four pounds of fat trimmings off of our last brisket here. What do you do with it? I just spent four, five, six, seven dollars a pound to buy this brisket. Now I gotta throw out three or four pounds of it? No, 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 no. We have a great way to use up all of this, not let it go to waste, and it's gonna be so great. It's called making tallow. We're gonna render down the fat. You can use it for cooking. They use it for making candles. We're just gonna concentrate on the cooking part of it. So let me show you how to do it. I wanna get started right now. Making tallow is a really cool process. It's very daunting. I know people are like, oh my God, how do I do it? It's nothing more than basically cutting it up, putting it into a pot and cooking it down. We're gonna render it down. We're gonna cook it at about 250, 300 degrees on the big green egg. We're gonna let it just go. And we're gonna stir it every once in a while. What's gonna happen is all of this fat that we got off of this brisket is all gonna render down into a beautiful liquid. You could use it for cooking and in place of butter, in place of oil, whatever you wanna use. It's gonna give a sweet umami flavor. So um, if you notice on some of these brisket pieces when we trimmed it, there's quite a bit of meat left on some of them. You could trim off the big stuff if you want and save it to make burgers or whatever, but it's okay if you have some meat on the fat too. That's not gonna do anything to it. It's not gonna hurt it at all. If anything, it'll just help flavor the, the, uh, the tallow a little bit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this up into little strips. You can do it in big cheap pieces like this, but it's gonna cook slower. It's not gonna cook as evenly. So if you cut it into smaller pieces or even run through a grinder, that's gonna help a lot. So let's get started cutting this up and get down to melting our tallow. Now we're gonna use all of the fat, okay? Even the hard stuff here, this is the kind of pieces that we like. It's the soft, gelatinous, the bigger pieces like that. This is the stuff that's really gonna be the money for us. So we wanna make sure and get all of this in here. Again, we're gonna use all of it. Some's more valuable than others when you're making tallow though. If you're gonna run it through your grinder, you like to partially freeze it a little bit first. It really helps out a lot. But if not, you can do it like this. You just need a really sharp knife. I'm using my new toadfish knife. It's available on our website actually thing as sharp as can be and, and it's just super comfortable to work with. So, you know, if you're using a knife, make sure it's a real sharp knife. You don't want to be doing this with a dull knife. It'll just wind up pulling it more than it does cutting it. So next thing we're going to do is load it all into our pan here and light our grill. We're going to cook this indirect. We don't want this direct. We're going to cook it indirect. So we got a nice even heat on this thing. So let's throw some charcoal in the big green egg and get it lit up. You want to make sure you're using a good grill safe pot. This is our Ramatov pot available on our website here. The thing is great for the grill. It's made of clay. It conducts heat really well and it holds heat really well. So it's perfect for a nice even cooking on this tallow. In order to make our tallow, we're going to need some heat. So like I said, we're going to cook this indirect and we're going to use super premium charcoal today. We got our yellow bag. So we're going to pour some in here. And we're gonna use a couple of our Fogo fire starters. These things are awesome, little twirled up balls of hay almost. Nice and natural, so we're just gonna put them right down here in the center. I like to use two of them. I find that that works best. Let's put our convector in, get some indirect cooking going. So you wanna always wanna start with a clean fire, so I'm gonna give this thing a little scrape. Do you use a scraper? I don't like the ones with bristles. We have this wood one now, and it's kinda cool because as you use it, it actually forms grooves in here to match up with the grate lines. So just give it a quick grate here. We're not cooking anything directly on the grates, so it doesn't have to be super clean, but I don't want anything on there that's gonna give an off-putting flavor. So that's nice and burnt off. We've got this. Now there's a number of different ways to do tallow, okay? There's a lot of different methods. Here's how I do it, which I find works the best. I love it doing it like this. First, I'm using this pot here. It's not cast iron. It's a clay pot, an enamel clay pot. I find that the fat doesn't stick to it as much, and it just disperses the heat really super evenly. So for the first half hour or so, I'm just gonna stick this right on here like that. We're gonna close it up and let that go for about a half hour. After that, I'm gonna put some aluminum foil over it. This way we retain all that moisture in there. Some people will add water in here. I don't like to add water to it. It doesn't need it, all right? It's just another thing, another step in the process later. Like this, we're just gonna do this. We're gonna filter it at the end and we're gonna start using it. I'm even gonna show you how to use it. Some tasty food coming up. We've been humming along here at about 275 degrees for about a half hour or so. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna put some aluminum foil over the top of it and seal this thing in so it'll cook a little bit quicker and keep some moisture in. So let's see what we've got here. All right, it's starting to render a little bit. There's a little tiny bit of liquid at the bottom already. So that's good, that's what we want. But like I said, quick coat of aluminum foil, we'll be in good shape. That's it. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna let this go for about another 45 minutes. We're gonna check on it, give it a little stir, 
You want to stir it occasionally. You want to make sure that stuff isn't sticking in there. It's supposed to just remember. It's just supposed to be rendering, okay? We're not trying to cook it or anything like that. We're just trying to render it down and melt that fat is basically what we're doing here by making tallow. Two hours later. I have good news. Our tallow is done cooking. We've been cooking for about two and a half hours. It's gone to about 275. It's even popped up to 300 degrees at one point, but we're constantly stirring it and mixing it, making sure it's good. It's boiling away. So we're going to go ahead and pull this off of here now. Woo wee. Now, don't forget folks, it's hot. Okay. <laughs> Put some gloves on. I got these big, long leather ones here. Take this off of here. Close that back up and let's check it out. You ready to see? Here comes the big unveiling. Ooh, look at that. Is that pretty or what? Now that we've got it cooked down, there's steps involved from getting it from this to this, which is what it's gonna look like in the end. Our first step, we wanna get a nice fine mesh strainer like this. Put it in a bowl here. We're gonna pour all of this, including the solids and everything, right into this bowl. So let's go ahead and do that. You can see how this stuff is really cooked down. It's, it's almost fried. It looks sort of like a chicharron, except don't eat it. It's nasty like this. It doesn't taste so good. Ah, the joys of family. So I said I was going to get some cheesecloth, and when I went to my cheesecloth supply, it's all gone. So actually, it's okay, because the next best thing that we have is paper towels. This will work absolutely fine, especially when the oil is hot. So I'm going to take another small sieve, okay? Do it just like this here. Put it inside the strainer. And all I'm going to do is pour this beautiful liquid gold right through there. This takes a little bit more time than it would with cheesecloth, but that's okay. Now that's all done. We got it all poured through. It's all strained through another drop or two here. But if you notice in the glass, there is no more sediment. But if you look at the paper towel that we just drained it through, see all that junk that would have all been in there. And what's going to happen is when you put that in the refrigerator, that's the stuff that carries bacteria and can cause food poisoning, cause a lot of different problems. So you want to make sure you get all that sediment out of there. Now we did it through here. We're going to pour it into our jar so we can pour it in our refrigerator just like that. And one last time into the jar. I'll run it through a paper towel again, just for good measure. You can't strain it enough. You always want to make sure that it's always filtered. Now, I got an idea. Let's see on this scale. So it's two pounds. So take off about six ounces for the, for the jar. So we've got a good amount of tallow here for. Now, what is tallow used for? Again, we covered it earlier. Use it for cooking. You could use it for any time that you're going to use butter or oil in a recipe or baking fat. Replace it with tallow. You're going to get that nice flavor. It's got tons of flavor from the beef. It's so good. This is like what I called it before, liquid gold. Now let me show you how to cook something with it. First thing I want to show you how to cook is really exciting. Super simple, some smash burgers, okay? Now, what I did is I put this plancha on here. We got this plancha, it's available on our website. Thing is absolutely awesome, fits on a large egg. We make them for, for an extra large, they're huge. So all I'm gonna do, take a little bit of our liquid gold, our tallow, pour just a little bit on, we don't need a ton. All right, again, just like you would use oil. Two regular things of meat, of just ground beef, okay? Just ground chuck. One and two. Listen to them sizzle. All right. They're going to cook. Now remember, you're cooking beef in beef fat. So you're going to have super extra beefy flavor. So they're just going to give it a little bit of extra salt. After they've gone for about 30 seconds to a minute, you just take your spatula like this and just push down. Just like that. And slide it off of there. And there's two. Now, the reason for a smash burger, okay, we don't want some beautiful uniform patty. No, that's not what we want on these. We want those nice craggly little edges. We want all those little pieces because they're going to become little crispies. So the flatter and the more little crispy edges you can get, the better off you are. You want to make sure this plancha is really hot. To know if it's hot enough, just put a little water on it. If it skips across there, like it doesn't even want to evaporate, you know that it's hot enough then. And our burgers are done. Look at those babies. Oh. Let me see the other side. Yeah, beautiful crust on both sides. That's what we were going for. Mm, and that towel is going to be so good. So those are our smash burgers. Next thing I'm going to show you a real simple recipe for garlic smashed potatoes. I got these little fingerling potatoes. I cheated. I boiled them already. They're super soft. All right. What we want to do is take them. You can just take the bottom of a pot. Just push down evenly about halfway. There you go. All you want is, like I said, you just want to smash it a little bit. So. I'm going to pour a little tallow on here again. It's already got some on there, but we're going to pour a little bit more. Okay. We're going to spread that around nice and even. Ooh, look at that sizzle. And just set them right down on there. Okay. 
You know me, I like garlic on everything. So we're gonna make garlic Parmesan smashed potatoes. So we're gonna just give a little sprinkling of garlic powder. Now, if you wanted to take some of the tallow beforehand and just mix some garlic powder into it, that's fine. Or fresh garlic, whatever you wanna do, that's fine. Take some Parmesan cheese, sprinkle that right on top, just like that. And we'll take our basting brush, which is available on our website, by the way, and just drizzle each one. Just drizzle each one. You can even rub it a little bit if you want to. Okay, but we don't want to get all the stuff into our jar, so. Hey, let those cook for about two, three minutes per side. That's all you need. And you're gonna have a flavorful side dish that's mm, gonna impress everybody and they have no idea just how easy it was. So I'm ready for eating. I wanna add a little, a little zip to it. So I got some of this Jacobson ghost pepper salt here. So I'm gonna put a little bit of that over my potatoes. Cause I like to add a little bit of spice and they could use a little bit of salt when we're done. Cause we did not salt them. The only time they were salted was during the uh, boiling process. So let's dig in with one potato first. Mmm. We had all sorts of stuff going on today. We made tallow, we made potatoes, we made burgers. Let me tell you something. Those potatoes and that burger are absolutely fantastic. This salt, I can't believe how much flavor the salt adds and just a little zip to it too. So listen, this is a fun one for us. It's not, I know it's not, we didn't barbecue a brisket or something like that, but it's great because instead of throwing out all that trimmings, now you have something you can do with it and it's gonna add a ton of flavor to your food. I'm telling you, those potatoes and that burger cooked in that tallow were fantastic. For me, I also love making it because I like to have something to do. It kills me to trim three or four pounds of fat off of a brisket and just throw it away. I know you probably don't like that either. But in any case, that's just how you do it. It's a really simple process. Try it for yourself. You'll find out it's really super simple. All right, it's fun and best part, it's tasty. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope that you get out and make some. I also hope that you get out and grill and I'll see you the next time on The Fogo Life.